Hello, this is a podcast about Jesus Revolution. We went and saw it actually a couple times now. Um, and we wanted to talk about it because it really, as uh, people that do ministry involved in the, in the, in the church, um, love people, love broken people, come out of a world of um, new age, uh, it hit home. So we want to talk about it. We want to share our thoughts, but not just that, but related to the word of God and how the spirit is moving now in the church overall, but specifically in our ministry as well. And it's our home life, whatever that looks like. Um, but yeah, my name is Austin. My name is Noah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're married and we've been doing ministry as, as we said, and, uh, watching this movie, it's been cool to see one, the history, because we actually go to a church called Wildwood and it's part of the Calvary Chapel chain there. So it's kind of seeing the, the old roots of, um, of where our church kind of sprung up from here in Southern California. Um, but yeah, it, it's cool to, I don't know. It's kind of cool to see history. I, I like church history in general going way back, but kind of see it's like modern but like not that far ago it's 50 years ago church yeah. history so it's cool yeah it's crazy the parallels between today and back then you you hear about like this you know kind of period piece that's you know 50 years ago and you think oh this has got to be you know not really that relevant to today but um just seeing the parallels between kind of the societal rebellion from the youth that was happening back then is very similar to today. Even the drugs that they were taking back then um, have become really popular again today. And just the spirituality of it all, of um, these people who, um, like Greg Laurie says, um, and I think it's Chuck's, no, Lonnie Frisbee, who says it in the movie, is is that you have these group of people who are looking for all the right things just in all the wrong places. And uh, that's what they were looking for back then um, through drugs and, you know, spiritual, they were seeking spiritual awakenings, but they weren't looking to the God that we know. Um, and it's the same. It's the same today. There, there's all these people seeking spirituality. Um, but for some reason, when you bring up, you know, Jesus Christ, they, they don't like that <laughs> aspect of it. They're just looking for a God, you know, something to to believe in that's bigger than themselves. Mm. Well, it's the, the, man, there's a lot there, but it's, it's the youth looking at hating authority and um, pretty much nowadays I'm saying the youth now, which yes, parallels with the youth of the sixties and seventies. It's showing that they hate authority, but specifically they're telling themselves, Hey, I need to listen to the inner kid. I need to listen to the little kid yep. inside of me and they're going to make, the, they're going to run the decisions and that's going to be best for me because I only have one life and all these things. And it's a lot of like, yeah, you only, you do only have one life and yeah, you should have a childlike faith. There's a lot of things that parallel with the word of God, right. but it's wrong direction, right? It's exactly, yeah. it's, it's looking for the right things in the wrong places. And, and the best thing what I like about Chuck Smith um, is he's pointing, he points to youth towards the word of God and the structure of it of, Hey, 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 like, yes, there's, there's an emotionalism and a hype that comes from it. That's good. That's the initial spark as, as Greg has, has said. Um, and, and Lonnie Frisbee, which from the film, by the way, there'll probably be a little bit of spoilers in here. I'm sure yeah, um, most of it. probably. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's worth Please, the watch. Yes. Um, anyway, it, 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 for Lonnie Frisbee being, of the of that crew of spirituality and, and and chasing that dragon he um he was able to speak the language of the youth of the day and then in that kind of get people the youth into church and a lot yeah. of them were echoing like oh we've never been in a church before yeah um, but we love god and or we're curious about god and getting the yeah. youth that are just curious about it to, to come in the door and then chuck was able to wrangle it mm-hmm. with the word of god install disciplines so for them to live by and um a lot of testimonies have come out of that of one a lot of the calvary chapel churches come from um pastors and people that were involved in that of course greg Laurie being one um but also just testimonies of like, I've turned my life around and I was able to spread the gospel to my family and friends and, and save them out of it. You know, it's, it's cool to see, like you said, the parallels. So was there any other kind of, and maybe even like personal parallels you've saw in the movie where you're like, Oh, (laughs) I felt that. Or you you felt convicted. Not that you do it now, but you knew like, Oh, that was me. That was me at one point. 
Yeah, I mean, definitely. Just with like the whole spirituality thing, even though I grew up as a Christian and was in church for most of my life, um, I fell away at, you know, multiple points, but like I, I really started falling away during a certain point. And I, you know, kind of fell into that spirituality, um, realm and, you know, manifestation, like, um, like crystals, all that kind of stuff. Um, and just, you know, what that really is, is just, you know, trying to make yourself your own God and, and just saying that, like, what a lot of people say is just like, oh, all the power that I need is within me already. And, you know, mm. they don't not having the Holy Spirit inside them, but just, just, you know, saying that they have this God inside of them. And that's what I think the majority of um, people in today's society kind of depend on. It's super self-centered um, completely. It's just basically every man for themselves and like, mm. um, just focus on you. It's all about you and what you want and living your truth, um, which is silly, but yeah. I definitely related to that. I, I know what it's like to um, to just be seeking, um, but just looking in all the wrong places. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, yeah. Mm. That's good. I know. I, I, I was even as you were talking, I was like, okay. I'm just trying to like look at, trying to reflect on the movie and, and stuff like that. But like, even for me watching it, there was a lot of like. Um, that I, I used to, or you know what? I used to see this a lot, I'll say. Maybe not so much myself, but definitely at certain points in my life. But um, I saw, I see this a lot, even now, um, of the the community, young and old. There's kind of just this, this new age, everyone that fits in that, um, being like, hey, the best way to improve yourself is to love yourself, like you said, kind of you were right. referring to. And like how you make prog prog progress is like self-love. How could you love others if you don't love yourself? Right. And there's like a, a certain truths to that. There's certain things of like, hey, you have to know your identity. You have to know your what's going on around you. Um, you have to be filled so you can pour out. Yes, right. absolutely. But also um, I have found it in a, in a lot of ways of being a, a servant to, to others helps me. Yeah become who I'm actually my true identity yeah. is to be a servant uh, because sure. I'm a servant unto Christ and he's called me to serve others so it, it's helped me to identify myself of like yeah. hey I, I'm a servant if I were to just sit here and serve myself for forever it, it would just be toxic it's not what I'm called to do but um if I were to say like for our ministry like if I were to um just keep my my spiritual gifts to myself of like Oh, which I have before of making uh, podcasts for a, a worldly environment. Um, it's like, man, I'm building myself up with a gift I have yeah. um, or something that I, I have as a passion of my my own passion, which is not necessarily wrong, but I was just doing it in the wrong way for the wrong yeah, reason. Right. And it wasn't to the specs that God had called me to, but also I was just doing it for myself. Yeah. And the thing I was putting out, I want people to see and be like, wow, look, that's so cool. He does that. Instead of now we're putting out a podcast. Yes, that's not the bad thing. Podcasting <laughs> isn't the bad thing, but the reason why you're putting out, and I think the reason why we want to make a podcast like this for people to see is one um our heart yes our heart for what we're doing here with our yeah. our ministry at latrea yeah. but also to share the gospel to share yeah. the gospel and well wow like i i love the movie not just because it was a fine film which it was very yeah. well acted and Amazing. put together and directed all yeah. these different even things. non-believers agree <laughs> yeah absolutely we brought we brought plenty of non-believers and people that are kind of lukewarm in it all and just like they've been like, yeah, it was actually really good. Yeah. Like, you know, and they get to see all the sides of ministry, but also like what we're doing here is to look at that stuff and be honest and be open and be like, wow, we used to struggle with that or we still struggle with that or yeah. it's still something we fight. It's still something we combat. Definitely in ministry. If it's not personal, it's something we see yeah. and right. should be talked about mm -hmm. in a dress. So it's cool to make a podcast to address that stuff in the kingdom. Yeah. Um, so yeah I, I, yeah, I think it's just fun to do a podcast in the right light. Yeah, for sure. Something that um, that I kind of got from the movie um, is that, well, like something that they said in the movie, not directly, but you know, you can, oh, it's open to interpretation. <laughs> um, it's just like the fact that, and I feel like it relates so much to people today, is that there's all these people who like, they say that they're seeking the truth. Um but, but like, it's kind of like, if you're really seeking the truth, then like, then seek the whole truth. Like, 
like these people who say they're seeking the truth just like completely stir away from Christianity and like Jesus in general. A lot of it's from church hurt um, and some people who just never really gotten into it, but they've heard bad things about Christianity. So they mm. just like stay away from it. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm just like, if you're really seeking the truth, then like try church, like try it. Like you don't have to, that's something that um in the movie, uh, Greg and Kathy were talking about because Greg was like, I don't know, like I don't, like I'm kind of scared. Like he was just scared to find out if Christianity was true or not because he's scared of what that would mean for him. And she said, well, let's find out together. And I think that's just so cool to be like, like it's okay to find out. It's okay to try it. And if you try it and you hate it, then all right, like, I mean, that sucks. That's really sad, but at least you tried. But a lot of people are so afraid of even trying to um, to actually seek the truth, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they seek the truth and, you know, as, as they say, like all the wrong places, um, never being willing to go to church, never being willing to seek God, to, you know, pray a prayer. I think that's such a powerful thing when you, when you're not sure about what you believe, um, and you just pray to God, not knowing if he's really there or not. And you just, you ask, you say, God, please, like, if you are real, like, please reveal it to me. I want to know the truth. Like, I want the truth. But I think so many people are afraid of actually coming to that place. So they say they're seeking the truth, but, you know, they're not fully seeking the truth. So, mm. yeah, I, I think, well, who, who's the truth, right? It's Jesus Christ, of mm-hmm. course. And the, the harken back to what we we're talking about earlier of, of, the, the character of Jesus of like, hey, like these young teens in this movie and older um, are, are finding Jesus. And I, what I like to see, what I like to see in the movie was, was Greg struggling in his faith of yeah. seeing um, his family lie to him, seeing uh, relationships kind of go wonky and uh, not just like like girlfriend, boyfriend relationships, but like church relationships, mentor yeah. relationships. Um and, and the the realism behind that in a walk, but what's polarizing to the youth nowadays, I'll harken back to that point too, is is Jesus, and salvation is not the 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 um, difficult part to grasp and obtain, right? Because it's yeah. a free gift. It's a free gift to those who put faith in Christ, um, and, and that is awesome. That is cool. Like you just have to come before the Lord honestly and just ask for forgiveness and yeah. understand that He is Lord and submit yourself to Him. And it's free. For salvation is free for those who ask. But the the cost that comes into it, which is the the reason why a lot of people come to church and then leave after a while, is maybe the church isn't well managed. Yes, absolutely. But for those that are well managed, the cost to hey, you need to stop smoking weed. Mm-hmm. Hey, you need to stop hanging out with that person. It gets yeah. it the conviction becomes so great that it hurts because they continue to hold on to it. They grow a callous yeah. heart and they end up walking away from the faith, They're going apostate. And and it's and it's tough one for us to watch, especially as people in ministry yeah. are seeing people come and go and people in our lives come and go from the faith or people that at one point were on fire just kind of be like, I don't know, because of this or that. It's difficult and sad. Yeah. Um but the great part is, um, you know, I, there, there's two types of people. My mentor kind of taught me this is there's those who submit at the beginning of their walk. They submit, um, maybe at a, maybe they needed some revival in their faith. And they're like, at this time of revival, I, um, I submit myself wholly to you, Lord. I'm going to stop everything. They drop everything. They, they let go of everything. And they're just like, you know what? I'm going to leave that girl, submit my way. To you only, I'm going to start serving in that place you wanted me to serve. I'm going to start teaching the gospel to those who need to hear it in my family. I am just going to, I'm going to give up alcohol, whatever that looks like, right? As it, as it was for me at a point. Um, it, it hurts at first. It's a struggle at first, but yeah. the Lord gives you the strength to get through that. And honestly, it's a blessing and it's, and it gives you, um, it gives you strength. Like, yeah. it, it, like the joy of the Lord is your strength in, yeah. that, in that time. It's true. Um, but then there's the other side. There's the second Christian. Where they kind of like, okay, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. Um, I, I'm just gonna my my letting go is gonna look a lot different. It's gonna it's gonna look like one by one. Yeah. So in their life, it's it, it's let go, and that's really big. 
that you probably will know when this person is going through something because they're always going through something because they're constantly having to let go. They're yeah. constantly having to let go. The Lord is they feel like they're constantly under trial because they're constantly disobeying. They're constantly having to butt heads with Christ and wrestle it out. Um, Thank God for them. They're saved, but their their sanctification process is uh, it's a lot more difficult one for them to walk, but for us to steward as well and help yeah, walk with for them, sure. um, and guide and speak into. But we'll always we'll always be there to help. But that being said, <laughs> is that cost of letting go? It's so much easier yeah. just to let go at the beginning. Yeah. It's so much easier just to be like, "Hey, Lord, I am yours. I am yours, all of it." And in there's, the devil's going to work full time to be like, "If you, who are you? If you let go of that, and you have to constantly remind yeah. them, this is why Scripture is our foundation. Yeah. The fight the devil is is you recite the word back yeah. to him. You recite what God has already defined you as. I know, like, no, you know what I am without." Weed, you know what I am without this relationship? You know what I am without these people in my life? I'm a son of God. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a daughter to Christ. I am one who perseveres and the Lord gives strength to when yeah. I call upon it. I'm filled with the spirit and I'm able to overcome because he who has overcome the world lives in me. And that's, yeah. that's who you tell. And that's that's how you tell the devil in those yeah. times. And it's difficult, yes. Yeah. The importance of church, though. Yes. Um, yeah. Was there, okay, a quick question. Speaking of the importance of the body of Christ, was there anything that kind of spoke to you in this movie about the body of Christ? Anything, maybe some overlining things that they didn't directly like kind of talk about, but it was there? Yeah, I I love just like the fact that, and you know, this isn't always what God is calling you to, but I just love to see it. Just the fact that um, like they just let the hippies into their home and like, <laughs> and then after a while they, you know, they rented out or bought some houses for them to live in and then all of those hippies um those god-loving god-fearing hippies were living together in one house and you know sharing their resources Mm. and and they even put all their the little bit of money that they had together to buy greg a car i just love the picture that it painted of unity in the church Mm. and and not just like oh yeah we're family and and i see you on sundays and i'll say hi to you on sundays and you know you know i love you like that's great but i love I love just seeing a a real picture of unity of my stuff is your stuff, whatever you need. If I have it, like it's yours. Like that is is so beautiful just to see just the church coming together in unity, regardless of their differences, regardless Mm. of different socioeconomic status, Mm. just loving on each other. And what's mine is yours. That's like beautiful. I loved that. Mm. Yeah, that's that's something um, Chuck Smith had to overcome in the movie of that um, that um, social prejudice mm-hmm. of these hippies. <laughs> like he says, like what they need is a bath, right? And this is something they need, and it's so easy for us to look at people and like what they need is mm-hmm. what they need is Jesus. Like, yeah, they do, but like, how does that look? Mm-hmm. How do how do how does the church respond to them? Yeah. How and, and Chuck's way. Um, which Lonnie brings up to him is to open up your doors. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, it's funny because you see the unity of the body of Christ, but there's also conflict in a, of people having to walk out of Chuck's church. Yeah. Like not having sure. to, they willingly walked out of a movement yeah. of God because they're so arrogant mm-hmm. to what God was doing because obviously they didn't value and walk on the walk in the word of God because they would know how, the, how Jesus would actually yeah. uh, treat these hippies. Um, they just liked what tradition was. Yeah. Right. And there's good tradition. Mm, yeah. There's good traditions. Like um, th- there's many good traditions that the, that the church has set up through 2000 years ago through our, the apostles and, and the early church leaders. But there is also a lot that has been introduced in the last yeah. couple hundred mm-hmm. years that is yep. really toxic. That caused those people to walk out of the movement of God willingly yeah. and thinking that they're so self-righteous, reflecting of the Pharisees of the day yeah. of Jesus. Um, but what was cool to speak on the unity, which is a huge topic, um, to speak on the unity in that movie was seeing the seeing Chuck, seeing Lonnie, seeing Greg all be vulnerable in their own ways. A bunch of vulnerable, broken people. We'll start with Greg. Greg being someone who had to grow up quick, 
right? He had to grow up quick in an environment where he had to take care of mom mm-hmm. and to grow up without a dad and adapt and uh, in a military school and, and all these different things, right? He has to grow up quick. And in that, you become really reserved because there's a lot of people who don't know who you are. They don't know. They don't get it. Yeah. And they're just kind of growing up. And you're just like, man, I'm different than you. I've already learned that. I've already I've already grown out and above that. Um, which there could be some pride in that. But also it could be validity to it. There's a lot yeah. of validity to that. Um, but you see him do that. You see him grow up in that. And that you kind of see that in his character of like, hey, uh, I'm this guy. I'm learning it. I kind of know better. Even when he meets his... Um, his wife, Kathy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he, he meets his wife in the movie. The discussion is a very philosoph- like philosophy discussion of like, there's absolute <laughs> truths. He's already got yeah. things figured out, right? There's absolute truths. I just don't know. Him yet. Yeah. He, he's already, he's already got, <laughs> he's there. He's already got the structure of like, Hey, I'm already, I'm already past certain yeah. people. He's already walking with a posture that is a past a certain people and has a confidence in his walk, but also he's reserved. Mm-hmm. And you kind of see of like the drugs are able to open him up in that environment. The pretty girl gets him to go into that environment, right? But also you see him come out of that environment and come into an environment of a church of, yes, yeah, still very open, vulnerable, um, but in different ways for yeah. different reasons. Yeah. And it's a lot more intimate than it is for just like smoking weed with friends. Right. Um, yeah. Not in all churches. Right. Not in all churches. There's there's definitely quote unquote hippie groups and people that go out and do drugs in the back hills and all that that probably have a better relationship with one another than some Christian fellowships do. Yeah. Which is irate and its own thing. But um it, it's cool to see a young man like Greg, he's nineteen in that in the film. Um, kinda his character grow in that. Yeah. Of like being this young dude that just kind of like, yeah. I got it. And he's like, now I got it. Yeah. And then he finds Christ and he's like, mm-hmm. now I don't just got it. I'm confident. Yeah, for sure. I think so many people can learn a lot from Greg. Just and not even like you don't even have to be a believer, but just like the fact that he's open. He's so open and he's seeking. He's not just say, staying stagnant and being like, well, I don't know, so I'm not going to try to figure it out. But he he knows that there are absolute truths, like he said. And then he's like, he's determined to find them. And he's not going to stop searching until he does. And that's how he comes to faith in Christ. And mm. I think that is something that we can all learn from him. That's good. I um, To speak on Greg again. I spoke about his confidence, but there is this one thing that he kind of echoes back on twice in the film, particularly with Kathy is um, like, she, he asked a question to her, like, do you think this could last forever? Or like, if this is real, how long will the high last? You know what I mean? And something I had learned from um, a, a pastor was really good advice was I kind of asked the same question at one point where, um, not not necessarily in a doubting way. I just kind of brought it up of like, wow, the Lord's been so faithful and great. I've seen him move. Will I continue to see him move in the way? Like it's one of those things. Yeah. I was like, oh wow, like it was kind of more of a rhetorical question when I was asking right. it to a group, and the and the pastor's response was like, absolutely, Austin. Like you will continue to see the Lord work in the way. Maybe not in the same way every season. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the same, but yep. it's the same God. That's He'll good. be constantly be there. He'll constantly be working, sowing yeah. seed and harvesting. He'll constantly be around if you are seeking him. Yeah. If you are obeying him, if you're if you're dedicating your life to him, whatever that season has called you to, whatever yeah. that looks like, that'll always change. But the same God. Yeah. Same walk. Same, same, same. Mm-hmm. He just continued to walk it out. And you see Greg ask that question of like, man, um, like, do you think this will last forever? And like, do you ever doubt that? Ask that to Kathy. And Kathy's response, like, yeah, of course it's going to last. Like, of course it's going to last because we have an everlasting God. It's like something she didn't say, but it, it's, it speaks so evident of their yeah. character as it progresses. And of course in their life now. <laughs> where yeah. like like quite literally well, yeah, asked that question and now they're 50 years later yeah. still doing ministry at a insane scale yeah um at many different campuses so what's really cool about the jesus revolution movie um i'm so glad that they made it just and that they took so much time like in and, and effort and put that into the movie because i mean it shows it is such high quality um i just love it because 
like it's it's a movie that anyone would want to see because of its high quality and that's something that unfortunately you don't see a lot in very many christian movies Mm. and christian shows and and everything like that um and so it's just so cool that such a high production quality was made with this christian movie um so that people who who aren't immediately open to you know movies about Jesus would be open to going to see it, and that they would actually like enjoy it and be impressed with the quality of it. Um, and I think it's cool. Also, I I just love um, you know Christian media in general because that's what you know media is what is what a lot of um, people in our society today are turning to as kind of like. Um, an idol in a way, you know, they, they, they are so invested in these TV shows and in these movies and they put a lot of their personality into it. Um, you know, there's all those personality quizzes, which character are you on Buzzfeed? Um, and they put so much of their, their identity in these TV Mm. shows, in these movies, in social media, all of it. And so the fact that, that they were able to bring Jesus um, on such a like high quality um, into the media where lots of people are finding their identity. I think that's amazing um, because it just speaks to them in a, in a language that they understand basically. Mm. It's cool. Mm. Yeah. I, I, man, there's so many different medias now that I love, not just, not even just shows, right? Like we have, this movie. So we have the movie, right? Jesus yeah. Revolution. Now we have the chosen, the show. But then you have like YouTube content creators that yeah. um, are killing it with apologetics, um, explaining, just walking you through the word of God and and how church should be managed and set up according to the word. Like there's so many things that we're so blessed with in our community now. At, um, God-fearing Christians on these platforms that have obviously been anointed. One of them being Ruslan, which we had to we had the pleasure of meeting and, and talking with and actually watched his revolution with him. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that was a good time, but even his, um, his content, even for our friends. And I know, I don't even need to talk for our friends. This for us has been, been great for explaining roles of marriage, yep. e- explaining, um, how to approach people in ministry, how to go about uh, modern events and how to address those and social environments and stuff like that. Even old videos that he's had. Um, it's, it's been a blessing on how that has helped us um, develop in our, our personal walks, our walk together, and also just in our ministry and our, our families relationships. There's so much there. Yeah. It, it, it's great to hear someone like that. Even Alan Parr, yeah. um, brother Alan being such a great impact there as well, sharing his gifts. Um, and just just showing it in a in a really high production way too. Yeah, for sure. Where it, it's not just like the cheesy YouTube video that you click on, you're just like, oh, okay, like you know what I mean. And like, of course, like even a video like this could be cheesy. Hopefully, the conversation isn't. But it's low production. But I, I believe yeah. like those guys right there are on the front of hey, they're they've been called to do this. They have the twenty thousand dollar studio or you know somewhere like that, and um, they're able to put on a show that. Um, really help stewards people's walks, you know, they can share the gospel at a high quality, really big way. And not just the gospel, but also like help in your sanctification walk. Yes. Um, that's huge. That's something that people don't have. Don't people don't, don't get even at their own churches, sadly. Um, but even for chosen, we, we've taken family members to chosen and ourselves to, to see chosen in the theater also at home. Um, and it's been a, it's a great, way to open up conversation same with jesus resolution sorry (laughs) um it's a great way to open up a conversation about it right it's not going to do the work it's not going to convert someone maybe it will maybe the lord can speak through someone like that and convict them um i'm sure it has um but also um it opens the door for us to be like hey that's truth yeah hey that testimony is also mine you know it's also it's a window in um, into someone's life for, especially at such a, like, like we we're saying, like some non-believers that we've been with, um, we're just like, yeah, like I, it was, it was cool. I like this, you know, yeah. like, this is, this is awesome. And it, cause it is just a good film. It's like, 
it's a good story. It's a good love story. It's a good love story of the church, of yeah. personal relationship, friendship, ministry. Yeah. Jesus. Like, there's so much in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that being said, it's it's so important to use these things as tools. Yeah. Because it is a way in. Like you said, people are watching this stuff and identifying in it yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. We had just watched, uh, which is on the Chosen app, um, Angel Studios thing, where it, it, it's... What it was Gen X? Gen Z. Was it Gen Z? Yeah, it was Gen Z. I don't know the differences. <laughs> um, Gen Z reacts to the chosen. It was just a bunch of random kids that selected to react to it. Some not believing, some having been a lot having been hurt by the church and walked away in college yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Um, and their reaction was like really emotional. Yeah. And it was like, oh wow, like I see myself in this. Yes. Mm-hmm. And oh wow, like. Jesus is a cool guy, you know, yeah, like, and yeah. all these things. And, and there's a, there's a lot there, but, um, that being said, it, it's, you see these kids be broken down and, and start to ask questions. It definitely would marinate. And some of them, they kind of do a recap of like where they're at now. And some of them yeah. are like, oh, I start going back to church. I'm going to church now. I'm plugged in. Some of them are like, it's still a question in my life of like, mm-hmm. I believe that yeah. if there is a God, he, he spoke to me. Right. at that event you know and it's yeah. like oh wow like it, it's a show of god's grace and mercy in their life of showing up in yeah. such a profound way for the lord to handpick those individuals to to get that opportunity to watch a show they probably wouldn't have never watched yeah what's cool about everything happening in the media right now like jesus revolution the asbury revival um you know just just a lot of different things there's so much more but i'm not yeah. going to name them all there's a lot going on that's um What's cool about it is that that stuff is always there, right? There's always revivals happening. There's always worship nights going on and people being saved. Um, There's always people proclaiming faith in Christ, people being baptized. That stuff is always there. But what is so powerful um, about what's happening now is that it's it's not just in the shadows. It's being brought into the light through these different medias and people who, who... wouldn't normally be able to see that kind of stuff because, you know, you're not going to see that kind of stuff unless you're in a church most of the time. Um, People who wouldn't normally be able to see it can see it now. And, and I think that is so important that, that as Christians, we don't keep our faith to ourselves and we don't keep our faith to, you know, our church and our circles and just say, all right, well, we're just going to stay over here because, you know, you know, the, the world is kind of scary right now and they probably won't like what we say. There's a lot of Christians who are scared to speak out about their faith because it's just not the popular opinion right now um, in today's society. Mm. And so what's so cool is just being able to see all these people who are finally, because of these, you know, the Jesus Revolution and all these different medias that are coming out, they, they are kind of gaining the confidence to actually speak out about their faith. Um, Mm. Joshua Bassett, he's um, a star. He's a, he's an actor. He's pretty famous. Um, He's an actor and a singer. Um, He's mostly doing singing right now. And he's famous for his role in High School, the musical, the series. Um, And so there's a lot of like worldly people who follow him. Um, And very recently, um, probably a few weeks ago, he actually got baptized and he proclaimed his faith in Jesus and he shared a little bit of his testimony and posted that video on social media, on his social media platforms. And, um, and, the, and there were, there was a lot of lashback. There still is a lot of lashback from people who are living of the world who are saying, Oh, we lost him to the dark side. Wow. I thought he was cool. And now he's a Christian. Um, a lot of really hard things, um, but there's also a lot of uh, Christians who are, you know, coming up alongside with him, you know, offering their help to him, offering their support, which is super cool to see. Um, but I'm just so proud of his confidence, um, and not just him, but a lot of other people who are now starting to come out of the shadows about their faith as well. Um, it takes a lot of confidence um, to do that. It takes a lot mm. of strength to, yeah. to you know be openly, you know, when you have a big platform like that, you are 
opening your, yourself up to so much hate from so many people all over the world, you know, hiding behind a screen. They don't have to face the consequences to say whatever they want to say. That's scary. There's going to be a lot of hate. Um, so it is really powerful when somebody like Joshua Bassett, who has that kind of a huge platform, is able to speak out about his faith. Not only does it um, share his testimony with people, with unbelievers who might be able to relate to that and will come to Christ because of that, that is huge in itself, but it also gives other people, um, other like celebrities and, and people with big platforms, um, the nudge kind of to be like, oh, if he can share his faith with all these people, then why can't I? Why yeah. can't I share my faith? Why mm. am I over here hiding when Joshua Bassett is bold enough to share his faith with everyone, regardless of the consequences? So I think mm. that is so beautiful, a really beautiful aspect of what's happening today. Mm. That's so cool. I know there, there's been a lot of people um, popping up on these outlets and things being televised where you're just like, oh, wow, I felt like I've seen a lot of Jesus recently, even in the Super Bowl ads, right? Or Jesus' names being proclaimed and um, Matthew McConaughey going on Joe Rogan and sharing his faith and the, the um, sharing that Jesus is real, was a real person, that he was the Messiah. Um, and there, there's a bunch. There's a couple people on Joe Rogan, actually. It's been a trend recently where people go on there to share about Jesus. Yeah. Um, but what's important for us as a church is not to like, okay, so let's, let's say Chris Pratt. Um, Chris Pratt could be a pretty, pretty, um, polarizing character for the character. He characters, he pro, portrays in movies and shows and stuff like that. Um, not necessarily the most PG characters. Um, and he might not necessarily, um, walk in a, a perfect man's faith, so to speak. He might not be walking perfectly according to the word of God. Um, but he is walking with God, right? And he, and I know, I, I believe he got divorced as well and all these different mm -hmm. things, but it's, it's why I say it's important. What's important for us is to look at a guy like Chris Pratt and when he proclaims the name of Jesus, um, we could be like, but he does this, but he does that. He's not real. He's not this, but we have to rejoice that someone, he was bold enough, whether, whether he's at in his spiritual walk, he was bold enough to share the gospel in such mm -hmm. a polarizing, um, disrespectful community towards Christ, yeah. um, like Hollywood, like, yeah. um, like social media, like the news and all these different places. So it's cool to see young people, old people yeah. proclaim their faith. Um, especially someone like, you know, like, like these stars, you know, mm -hmm. that, that have a lot of this, this weight or, um, uh, it's cool for that. Joshua was doing that because it's like, he has weight, but he doesn't like, you know what I mean? Like he, he like someone could just not give him a job anymore because yeah. of that, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, even the little girl that plays Ellie on the last of us is a, is a Christian and stuff like that. And she, she does Christian uh, YouTube videos or singing worships music and stuff like that. And it's like, wow, there's these outspoken Christian people in, in that space. One, we shouldn't be taken away. As Paul says, is it in Philippians? It's either Philippians or Ephesians. I think it's in Philippians where it's like, man, I don't care if people are um, speaking the gospel against me for whatever reason, at least Christ is being proclaimed. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have yep. to take pride in. That's what we have to believe in. So we don't got to sit here and bash people. The number one people that... Um, bash the christian faith it's christians yes, I, I, yeah, that's just yeah. kind of how sad it is that's where how divided our house is it's disgusting believe that revival is going to start there so praise god um but also it's important for us to follow suit even though we aren't celebrities so to say we are so, quote unquote celebrities to those around us there's people yeah. that look up to us that we lead um that yeah. what the actions we do um they want to reflect they take the heart and they go, well, this guy does it, so yeah. I'm going to do it. Um, so if you are a Christian um, and you're and you're called into specifically ministry, say, um, like, like we are, I can't go out and smoke weed and be like, you know what? I'm still trying to work things out because I'm leading people. Yeah. Because people are looking to me and I'm held to a higher higher standard as a leader, yeah. as James says. Yeah. That will be judged more um, harshly, mm -hmm. crucially. Um in that, in that context, yeah. because I know better and mm -hmm. I'm leading others to, um, a, a place that is not of God. And yeah. one, I shouldn't be living there by myself, but definitely not leading people there. So proclaiming the gospel, not just with my words, absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. Should we be complaining the gospel with our friends and family? Because that's our ends, and that's quote unquote, it's honestly pretty easy. Yeah. Not necessarily just like, by the way, how's the Jesus stuff? And it's not like that. But that, you know what it means to verbally share the gospel at times. But also sharing the gospel with our actions in our homes, in our way we treat our 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 wives, in the way we treat our friends, our our, our mother and father, and proclaiming the gospel in that way is so important because yeah. so many people neglect it. Yeah. And and you see people a lot of the a lot of non believers or, or um, people that have walked away from the faith will always go, Well, so and so does it, referring to a Christian, mm-hmm. right? Well so and so does it, so like I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, and, or like yeah. you know mm-hmm. what? Or the or the or they'll twist scripture and all these things and Yes, yep. And it's just like, Well, it's it's fine because of this and it's fine because of that and it's and it's like, no, one, let's be boldly and correct them. Mm-hmm. But two, let's be boldly and live like Christ. That's what we're called to, and that's what yeah. we ought to do. And yeah. and to harken back to the original conversation of like, what Christian do you, what category do you fall in? Are you the one that's constantly having to let go? I'm not saying that I don't have to still let go of things, mm-hmm. but are you the one that's just like, I was pressed about letting this go, but I'm gonna write it out, mm-hmm. and I know I should but I'm going to read every book and read every verse and memorize it and seem like I'm right and tell everyone about it to, just to hold the ground as long as I can. Mm-hmm. And it's just ripping a Band-Aid off every single time. And and I, I will tell you what, if you if you live your life that way, stop it. Like, just, just stop it. Just drop it. Just let go. Surrender it. Yeah. Surrender your life to yeah. Christ. It's and exhausting. All of it. It's exhausting. And, and I, I understand that it could be exhausting letting go of all of it, but it's freeing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, and, and it's freeing and um, it comes easier than you think because Christ will help you in that. He'll yeah. honor it. He'll, he'll walk with you. He'll be with you. He'll, he'll guide you. He'll provide people around you. He'll open doors to, to help you get through those kind of things. He'll open doors for opportunity. Yeah. Close doors that need to be shut. He'll help you with that. Yeah. Not alone. But you just have to initially be like, Lord, I got, I'm done with yeah. all of it. I'm done with all that. I'm done. Yeah. And I want to say, if you think that you don't have influence and that people aren't looking up to you and that, you know, your actions don't have an effect on anybody because nobody really looks up to you in that way, that is incorrect. Uh, I know it's easy to think that, but there is always somebody who is looking up to you, no matter who you are, somebody who looks to the way you live. And, you know, even if they don't admit it, they they try to kind of replicate that. Um, and so... It's always important to make sure that you are living a life worth imitating because somebody is always going to be kind of looking at the way you're living and trying mm-hmm. to imitate it, even if you don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, are you cool to finish up with this last topic? Um, sharing the gospel, let's just say with our families, we'll talk about personal testimony. I know with like my, my nephews and my sister and all these different people, um, we just the way we've been living has opened up conversation yep. to to talk about the gospel with them and live it out and um, bring my Bible over and read a verse or two in front of them and it's not just like I'm gonna go read and do the whole thing as a show it's because I really believe it yep mm-hmm. and I really yeah. want to read the gospel and yeah. it's in me to like even when I go over I'm gonna make time to read my my Bible even when I go over I'm gonna make time to mention God because He's real and even if hey, if any of you guys are watching. Um, that are in the family or our friends that we we um, we always talk about Jesus. It's for a reason. It's real. Yeah, yeah. The gospel is real. Jesus Christ is real. He wasn't just a person. Mm. He was a living Son of God that was sent here to liberate us from our sinful mm. ways, to liberate from the sin and to die a death that we deserve. Amen. And it's it's real. Yeah. And and if you want to find peace and freedom, yeah. you surrender. Yeah. I I think it's so cool. Um, also because we do believe it so wholeheartedly, even, um, people like my family and and people like friends, people who don't believe they, they believe that I believe it. Like they see, they, they tell me even, even though they don't believe it, they're like, I, I can see that you believe it wholeheartedly. And like, they, they know that I'm telling them about it because I love them so much. And because if, if I believe this, if I believe that one day you're either going to go to heaven or hell, um, like obviously I'm going to want to preach that to the people that I love to save them. And so yeah. even it's so cool when you actually wholeheartedly believe it, when you're telling your friends and family about it who don't believe, 
because even if they don't believe, they they see that you believe and they appreciate it. Mm. They appreciate your effort because they see that you actually love them and you're actually trying, regardless of if they believe it or not, they see that you love them and that you're trying, that you wholeheartedly believe this thing that you're preaching to them. And that that speaks volumes to them. Mm. That alone. That's good. That it, that it does, right? Um, a, a lot of things are not taught; they're caught, right? Is it here of people catch your actions? They catch what you're doing, and it's a living testimony because you're actually living it out. You're not just talking about it. Yeah, you're not a hypocrite. Yeah. Um, but to to end on this note, uh, I'll end with this: is Jesus' revolution brought up new age stuff that's going on now? Yeah. It's holding a mirror to modern day society mm-hmm. of a godless place that needs Christ, mm. um, even in our churches. Yep. And sadly. And the the message of new age is you will find enlightenment if you invest in yourself, if you do drugs and let loose, travel the world and and mm. and do the jobs you want and let go of those responsibilities because they can wait. You only have one life. All of that is a lie. Straight from the devil and those philosophies, as Colossians um, talks about, are demonic. They're they're evil. They're philosophies that the demons have made up that man has believed and now worship by their actions. And if you're in those things, if you're watching this and you're in those things, if you're like, man, like maybe I'm pretty removed, but there's still a few things I hold on to. There's a, still these things I'm trying to work out. I just encourage you to come before Christ in prayer. You don't got to know how to do it. There's no cookie cutter way. All you got to go is, hey, hey, Jesus, hey, dude, hey, God, I I am a sinner and I, I'm doing these things that I hate. I'm doing these things that honestly, like maybe I even love, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I hate the the reality of it that it's not life-giving and I know it's not and it keeps leading me in a circle where I keep feeling empty and I have to chase the next high yeah. and I'm chasing it, I'm chasing I'm chasing it um you, you just say to the Lord hey I'm done chasing it I need you to fill that spot mm-hmm. I don't want I'm emptying myself of the new age and I'm enter I'm I'm allowing myself to be filled with new life um I'm gonna allow these dead bones to come to life and the only one that could do that is Jesus Christ. So if you, I encourage you guys to um, come into repentance in that way and just yeah. to go, hey, I'm living for myself. I'm living in the yeah. new age. Or maybe I'm even living in religion. Mm. Oh, I got everything figured out. This is, this is the way it should be. Everyone should live this way. Everyone should vote this way. Everyone should be this way. The only way is Jesus Christ and the word yeah. of God. That's it. So it's surrendered in that way. And that's what the message of, of Jesus revolution is, is, Hey, the Lord is going to recognize you surrendering. And not only that, he's not going to stop there, but you as a broken person in that moment, he's going to help heal you and put you together. But not just that he's going to use you. He's going to use you to do ministry. He's going to use you to put your family back together as he did for Greg Laurie. So saving his mother, saving his father that he met up later in life. They both came to Christ and the result of him, him showing his testimony in his life, um, that is your calling. Yeah. And it's like, well, maybe it's that guy's calling. Maybe it's them. It's just not my, it's not my time. It's your time right now. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's your time right now. It's not next week. It's not next month. It's not years from now. It's not going to be on your deathbed. It's possible that you don't make it there. Not, not all the grave sites are all 80 year old, 90 year olds. Yeah. There's infants, it's teenagers, it's 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds. You don't know when your time is, is near. So, we tell you, hey, repent of your sin. Yeah. It's bad. You're a bad person. I know you might feel like you got it all together. You're a good guy. You, you help everyone out. You're pretty good. You you smile all the time, but you have sinned against a holy God, and he loves you. He loves you enough to send his son to die for you, to lead you into a new life. So all you have to do is say yes. All you have to do is say yes to that, and he'll save you from whatever pit you're in, I promise. He saved me. Save he saved me. Noah. He saved so many of our friends. He yeah. saved all of our mentors that are now leading yeah. churches that are now like, mm-hmm. like he, he saved Greg Laurie when we, yeah. we just saw him the other, yeah. other day and you see his life yeah. 
quite literally see it on the big screen and then we see him in person yeah. the other day and it's just like oh man like he turned his life around and he yeah. can turn anyone's life and the lord yeah, can turn as, anyone's as, life around as Lonnie Frisbee said if he saved me he can save anyone <laughs> amen so um that being said you have anything else to hook on um there? just one more thing sure. uh if you are a believer um i just really encourage you to be bold in your faith uh awakening in america starts with revival in the church starts with revival in you you have the opportunity to um have revival in your heart right now just by surrendering to god mm, that's good yes revival starts with you and uh, what revival is, is you putting your trust and faith in Jesus Christ. And that's where it starts. So just Jesus is always the focus. We're not chasing revival. Revival follows us. As, yeah. tr- as Christians, as we pr- pursue Christ, revival just follows us. Um, but yeah, that being said, um, if you're watching this still, we love you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> um, you're awesome. And um, Jesus loves you in the realest sense of he died on the cross for you. For you, not just some other dude. For you specifically. He was thinking of you specifically. Insert name here. Um, He loves you. We love you. We hope to see you at one of our um, events, our ministry events. If you don't come to this, maybe you just, maybe you don't live in California, Southern California, where we do events. Um, I I hope you are blessed, and I hope that um, the Lord is using you and you're obeying Him as what He's called you into. Have a blessed day.